Hi, it's Barbara Bangini, and it's a rainy, dreary day on the inlet today. A good day to tell you about another cultural memory or growing up Italian. Take a ride with me, if you will, to the early 1950s in my little Pennsylvania town, where the population at that time was 3,000. Most of us were related or we were connected by friendship, or families had been friends back in Italy. But there was one more thing that connected all of us. Telephone poles. Yes, those big bulky poles that went along the roadside carrying the telephone wires. You see, back then, the social life centered around church. You might go to a church event a bingo, a bake sale, you might help cook for a funeral that was that held a luncheon in the church basement, or you might have baked cookies for a wedding at the church, but that was your social life. So the phone became very, very important. Now my first memory of the telephone, and these are memories, they're not stories I tell because of research, is my grandmother sitting next to the phone. My grandmother raised 12 children, and when she was 51 years old, she had a stroke, and the stroke paralyzed one whole side of her body. So she sat in the chair almost the rest of her life, but the phone was right next to her, and that became her lifeline and her social life. Now, back then, the phone was just a black, bulky thing, a receiver that you put down on, on the base of the phone. When you wanted to make a call, there wasn't any dial at the time. You picked up the phone, and the operator said, number, please, and you gave her the number. To this day, I can remember that my number was 1363L, and my grandmother's was 253J. Now, my grandmother used that phone to her advantage because, you see, we had party lines. Yes, one line, and we would have like four or five people on the line. And you could hear everything they said just by picking up your phone. There was always somebody on it. And if there were two people talking when you picked it up, you had to wait till they hung up. And some of them were very long-winded and it aggravated you many times. But my grandmother knew all the ladies that were on her party line. They had all come from Italy together. So it was nothing for her to pick up the phone and she would hear maybe um, Lucia and Maria talking and she would say, Lucia, it's me, Mary. I wanna tell my daughter if she should put vanilla in the biscotti. And Lucia would think nothing of it. He said, yes, tell her to put it in, and she would continue her conversation. But there were other ways to use the party line, especially for teenagers, and it wasn't very nice. For instance, we had a neighbor who was a girl, beautiful girl, and she used to bully us at school. So my sister and I would get on the party line, and we would hear her talking to her boyfriend. We wouldn't say anything. We'd just listen in and giggle. And she would say, I know you're on that line. You two better hang up or I'm going to report you to the telephone company. Can you imagine talking on the phone that way today? Everybody knew everybody's business. Well, come 1960, years later, after about 10 years of that kind of a phone, Everybody in town got a letter from the telephone company. And the letter said that on July 4th, 1960, our phones would be changed to rotary phones. And indeed, they came and they replaced your phone with a rotary phone in huge anticipation of this happening. For the first time ever, we were going to have a dial tone. People were nervous about it. How would this work? It was a new fangled contraption. Well, I have a cousin, his name is Mendes Napoli, 
Mendes and I were very close growing up. We were only a couple years apart. And we both loved research and, and he was more of a bookworm than his brother and my sister who were more like out riding their bikes and at the playground. Mendes and I used to discuss things about life even at a very young age. He might have called us nerds back then. But anyway, Mendes could not wait for that dial tone to come. And he was bound and determined he was going to be the first person in town to ever hear the dial tone. So he stayed up the night it was to happen. He stayed up and at three o'clock in the morning the next day on July 4th, he was sure to pick that receiver up on the minute. The first he didn't hear anything and he got frightened. He wasn't gonna be the first. And all of a sudden, he heard Ing! the dial tone. He became so excited. Now, let me tell you, Mendes now lives in Beverly Hills. He heads a very successful company called TV Talent. And he represents over 400 news and sportscasters across the country. Maybe one of the reasons he's so successful was because he loved to do research and he really kind of fostered that himself. He just wanted to learn more and more. He became very successful in the news business. In fact, the last time I visited him, I got to look at his Emmys. But the fact is, as successful as he is, he still gets excited when he talks about hearing the first dial tone in our little town. After that, things changed for the little old Italian women. They couldn't just pick up the phone and hear all their friends in a circle on the wires anymore. But they stayed connected in many, many other ways. Isn't it funny? I always say that we had to go clear out in cyberspace to come back where we were in that little town. Isn't texting just a form of shorthand? Isn't Facebook just a form of the party line? Aren't our group, like our group Facebook page, Godmother's Kitchen, isn't it just a little circle of friends who have the same interest? Which like my grandmother and her friends happens to be cooking. So yes, we were connected by love, we were connected by friends, we were connected by ancestors and local relatives, but we were also connected by those great big awkward looking telephone poles. So that's my cultural memory growing up Italian for today. I hope you'll travel back to me, to my little town for many more stories in the future. Ciao.